News Real World, real news real quick. Despite the Ukrainian government saying things aren't so dire in the eastern city of Bakhmut and that Russia has not advanced there, Ukraine's presidential advisor Alexander Rodnyansky said Wednesday that Ukraine will likely withdraw from Bakhmut in the face of the relentless Russian offensive that has sought for months to capture the major city. China's foreign ministry spokeswoman, Mao Ning, dismissed suggestions that a virus leaked from a Chinese laboratory in Wuhan caused the COVID-19 pandemic, after FBI Director Christopher Wray on Tuesday said that the FBI had assessed that the likely origin of the pandemic was a lab incident in Wuhan in central China. The House Select Committee on China began its first hearing Tuesday evening with fireworks as it laid out the challenge facing the U.S. in catching up and confronting an aggressive foe in Beijing. Chairman Mike Gallagher, a Republican from Wisconsin, said, quote, We may call this a strategic competition, but this is not a polite tennis match. This is an existential struggle over what life will look like in the 21st century, and the most fundamental freedoms are at stake, unquote. Belarus President Alexander Lukashenko on Tuesday began a three-day state visit to China and met with Chinese President Xi Jinping in Beijing. His visit comes as China is promoting a political settlement of the Ukraine crisis through a position paper issued on the first anniversary of the Russia-Ukraine military conflict. Russian oil output now exceeds its pre-sanctions level from a year ago. The International Ener Energy Agency has noted that Russian oil exports have held up much better than expected despite bans and price caps with daily production of crude oil and condensate at 1.508 million tons per day. The agency noted that Moscow has had great success rerouting much of the crude previously shipped to the European Union to new markets in Asia. A high-speed head-on collision between a passenger train and a freight train killed at least 36 people and injured 85 in Tempe, Greece, just before midnight on Tuesday. Multiple cars derailed and at least three burst into flames after the trains collided. And finally, Nigeria on Wednesday declared ruling party candidate Bola Tinubu the winner of the country's presidential election on Tuesday. Tinubu's all-progressive Congress party urged the opposition to accept defeat and not mire the country with court challenges. And that's the way the world is. See you next time.